I'm Felix Velardi. Um, I've started three businesses all on £2,000. Um, the first of them was 1994 when I first started the uh, UK's sixth um, digital agency, so digital advertising agency. My current agency is called Underwired, um, and I've been running Underwired for the last five years or so. We are um, an interactive, creative planning production company, <clears throat> and we produce online marketing campaigns. Um, so websites, online advertising, uh, and increasingly email marketing and SMS, uh, what we call ECRM, Electronic Customer Relationship uh, Marketing or Management. Our clients um, these days are people like McCain, <coughs> Peugeot, Philips Electronics, uh, Nickelodeon, Nick Jr., News International, Sun Bingo, and uh, Dream Team Fantasy Football, and uh, various others, uh, and various Virgins, uh, Virgin Megastores. We built their website last year, just before it was sold. They've now painted it green, but it's the same site. Um, and Virgin Holidays, uh, where we're just coming to the end of uh, a five or six year relationship. So, um, this uh, fairly brief uh, presentation, I'm going to cover two things. One is why is Underwired um, as a company successful? And secondly, is it really recession proof? And I'll, I'll talk to you about, in terms of the recession proofing, why I think that digital um, provides an avenue uh, for companies to survive if there's a sharp downturn and certainly maximize their budgets, whether there's a downturn or not. So, um, uh, to start off with the secrets uh, of success, if you like. I'm just going to talk about two common sense rules. Really common sense. And obviously common sense, my wife taught me common sense because nobody seems to grow up with it. And certainly no men seem to grow up with it. <laughs> well, this is the starting point. Most of us who run small businesses or medium-sized businesses, so I'm exactly like you all in that I started very, very small, and I'm trying to grow it uh, as best as I can. Um, as the uh, leaders or managers or, or, or heads of small businesses, we tend to wear at least seven different hats. Um, it could be nine. It starts off as 20. Um, some of those hats, um, you're responsible for sales, ultimately. You're responsible for finance, because you're the one with the bank account. Uh, team management, you're the one who's got to grow the team. Uh, PR. Uh, client services, so you're running the clients, the major clients, uh, more often than not. Uh, strategy, the direction of the company. And because it's your company, obviously, and because the people that you employ have very sp specialized jobs, you get the, the nasty ones, so toilets go wrong, phones go wrong, you've got a legal problem. Um, that all devolves to you. It's your, ultimately your responsibility. You tend to care most. So I went through a, um, a, a corporate evaluation last year in March, I hired a, uh, a company um, to come in as a sort of mini management consultancy in the marketing industry, who came in and, and they sat me down and they said, well, all of these jobs, you're quite good at some of them, you're not very good at some of them, uh, client service being one of them, um, you're very good at, uh, at sales and you quite seem to quite enjoy PR and you seem to have a handle on strategy, so why don't you just delegate and let go. So I actually hired my very first, this is after 14 years, finance director. Um, I have a client services director, and I just said to her, tell you what, you look after the team. Um, I thought I'd keep PR for myself, because I quite enjoy this kind of stuff. Um, I, the client services, client service director, she looks after that. Strategy, I do. We've hired an office manager. It costs us 17,000 pounds a year. And she looks after toilets and phones and the lobby and any problems that happen and when somebody's phone doesn't work and so on. Suddenly, where I was stretched seven different ways and I didn't know how to cut up my day, and when I was looking at my timesheets and I was thinking, well, I'm spending a seventh of my time on this and a seventh of... And, and some of it was just irritating, not profitable, time-wasting stuff. You don't want to be sat there having to sort out the fact that you've got a leak in your kitchen um, or that somebody's having problems with their relationship and needs to go and cry on your shoulder for an hour. Those things are not productive for your business. If 
by delegating all of those things, I can concentrate on some seriously profitable things. The future director, direction of the company, make sure that we're going in the right way. The PR that gets us most of our new business and our clients. And sales, the sales process, doing the pitching. We win about 75% of all of the pitches that we do. and We pick and choose very carefully which pitches we do. All of my time is spent on that, plus a one-to-one -one with three people every week. My planning director, my creative director, my client services director. They're the ones who run the business, and they're the ones who take all of that crap away from me so that I can concentrate on getting the money in. And ultimately, getting the money in is what business is about. So that's common sense tip number one is get rid of the stuff that you're okay at or that you're doing because you're the only one to do it and spend a few grand, even on a part-time person, get them in and offload. You'll suddenly find you'll be able to spend most of your time on profitable things to do. One of my roles is strategy. One of my three remaining roles is strategy. I mentioned timesheets before. Timesheets, you can tell probably by the way that I'm dressed, I'm not particularly a conformist. You won't find me very often in a suit and a tie. I'm not particularly buttoned down. I don't have particularly much education. Um, I don't tend to follow the rules, which is why I got into uh, web design and digital marketing in 1994, is because it was the only place that I could go where I could make it up as I went along and, and create the rules or help create the rules myself. Um, I resisted timesheets until the beginning of last year. Everybody said, you need to do timesheets. It was like, oh no, that's corporate grey world. I don't need to do timesheets. We instituted timesheets because I just got fed up with people saying we need to do this. And I thought, okay, well, we'll do it for a year. I'll show everybody that we don't need to do it, and it's just wasting our time, and then we'll bin it. Um, and as often happens, I was proved completely wrong. Um, timesheets are brilliant. I had every single person in the company fill out a timesheet, just guessing roughly what, how much time they'd spend on each uh, of their activities during the course of a day. So not down to the quarter hour, but for example, three hours spent on McCain Foods, an hour spent on writing reports, an hour spent on one-on-ones with their reports, uh, an hour on billing, and so on. And we had everybody in the agency do this. And actually, after three months, we could suddenly see that some of our clients we're just wasting our time. We discovered that um, around 70% of our clients um, were accounting for only 20% of the time that we were spending. So we had 70% uh, of our, our um, income was coming from a tiny proportion of our clients. The rest of the clients, the small ones, the clients that we've grown up with, that we've had forever, that we're mates with, who were giving us an annual revenue of maybe £20,000 were the ones where we were having to make a phone call every day or go to three meetings a week or spend days and days and days refining designs for them. We were spending all of our time over-servicing little clients. And we took a very, what, what, what uh, Tim's just kindly described as a brave step. Um, we actually got rid of most of our clients. So the reason that we now have the clients that you saw at the beginning, McCain's, News International, Nickelodeon, Peugeot, and so on, is because we no longer have uh, those clients that were lovely, that we really enjoyed working for, but actually took up all of our time. The second that we cut out all of those clients, we suddenly found that everybody in the agency had more time to deliver better work to the big clients. We started getting more work from those big clients, and last year we grew by 50%, just from getting rid of something like 20 clients. Okay? It also showed us that while interactive TV was really, 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 really cool, um, we weren't making any money at it. In fact, we were making a loss. We were spending much more on the kit and learning and development time and going out and meeting people than we were making in revenue for clients. We don't do interactive TV anymore. Our agency is slightly more profitable as a result. So 
common sense tip number two is it's a business. You do have to be quite hard. You have to be ruthless with the clients that you have and making sure that the clients that you have are profitable clients. You need to learn from the timesheets that you do and from uh, identifying which kinds of clients are and aren't profitable. You need to learn which kinds of clients you then want to go and pitch for next time. So this year, Sun Bingo, the London paper, um, and New Media Age have been the ones that we've actively sought uh, as clients, gone out and won them, because we know that they're the kinds of clients that do good for our business. They make our business profitable. So that's the common sense bit. 